Every time I walk by the boiler or every time I walk through the boiler room, I'll just glance up and be like, oh yeah, we're good. We're still good. We're still good. On a boiler operating a hun under 400 PSI, we're required to have one boiler sight glass active, ready to go, in service, all but not ready to go, but actually in service all the time. Your kind of typical, um, you know, simplest is going to be like a red stripe, just a tubular gauge glass. And that gauge glass is going to be, the advantages would be that they're pretty cheap and easy to replace. And there's lots of videos out there of how to do that. So that's the advantage. The disadvantage is, you know, if I have a tall boiler or a large boiler room, uh, and I need to see that that boiler has a safe operating level at a glance or from a distance, it can be pretty hard to tell where the little meniscus in there is. People can add trouble lights or add better lighting to help that be more evident where the, the boiler water level is. But I like, to, I like to frame it this way. If one of the most important things to the safe operating of your boiler is making sure that it has water in it, how often should we validate the water level of the boiler and make sure that those automated controls are working as they're supposed to and the water level is where it belongs? I think the answer is often, as often as practical. And so as often as practical is, if I can tell in half a second by looking at the gauge glass from across the room where the water level is, I'll check it every time I walk by. Every time I walk by the boiler or every time I walk through the boiler room, I'll just glance up and be like, oh yeah, we're good, we're still good, we're still good. If I have to climb a ladder and get a flashlight and shine it through a gauge glass and jiggle the glass to try and see where the water level is, you're lucky if it's checked once a shift when somebody rounds on that boiler or twice a shift when somebody rounds on that boiler. There are gauge glasses I've encountered in facilities that are so hard to read that with a flashlight and the lead operator, we had a hard time identifying water level. That is a completely unacceptable and unsafe scenario. So from that frame of reference, for many, many, many boilers, especially short gauge glass boilers, like a tubular gauge glass is perfect. It works great, especially if it's kept clean and swapped out at an appropriate interval so that we can see what's going on. Where I see people get into trouble is when they don't feel comfortable replacing it themselves and they allow leaks from packing to progress to the point where you just literally can't see where the water level is. Uh, or in situations where the column isn't being blown down every day and you know kind of rusty scummy junk is building up inside that gauge so that you're not really sure where the water level is that could be a dangerous situation so we need to get some training for how to swap that gauge glass ourselves and, and get that corrected now if you have good clean gauge glass and it's still hard to tell because of the height or obstruction or distance from that gauge glass then that's where we can start to look at other alternatives uh, you know albeit more expensive alternatives. Kind of the next steps up would be flat glass, where we have glass on both sides and a light shining through it. You know, that's typically used on higher pressure boilers, but can be used on a low pressure boiler too. Or one that we like to see even on low pressure boilers would be like a prismatic style glass. So the, the front side of the, it's a flat glass, and on the front side of the glass uh, is flat, but on the back side of the glass, it's kind of a sawtooth pattern in these vertical stripes. And what that means is, when there's no water behind the glass, like on the top half of the glass, light goes in and hits this prism and bounces out and the top half of the glass is white. And on the bottom half of the glass where there's water, the light goes in and hits the back of the gauge in the casting and you're seeing the back of the gauge. So looking from a distance, it looks like the gauge glass is white on top and black on bottom. And I can tell at a glance where, where the water level in that boiler is at. Those are really nice for distance or height reading a gauge. Drawbacks would be they're quite a bit more expensive. The gaskets and the, the prismatic glass can be expensive. I don't know that you can use mica protectors on those. So you, if you have issues with erosion of the glass, uh, then you're gonna wanna go to the flat type rather than the prismatic type. Uh, and then the last is just training. I've been to several facilities in the last year where Whoever was doing maintenance on the boiler wasn't sure how they worked and they put that prismatic glass in backwards. And so they went from a really easily readable gauge to a nearly impossible gauge. Uh, you could not hardly see the meniscus of the water in there because the prisms were pointed out instead of into the water. So certainly we need to be familiar with our equipment and make sure we're using those correctly. Uh, and then the, the last style is kind of, uh, I forget what they call it, but it's kind of this bullseye style where when I have a gauge that's extremely far away or extremely tall uh, or very high pressure, then the code actually allows us to do a gauge glass where 
it's actually two different round glasses opposite each other in a column, but they're tipped just a little bit. And so when they're tipped, then they shine in two different color lights and the light is bent whether there's water inside the gauge or not. And so in this type of gauge, it would be like the bottom half would be green bullseye dots and the top half would be red dots. And so from a distance, I can see how many green and red dots I have and know that the boiler has a good water level. Uh, and so we can put a, a visual up for this video, but those are very helpful. But again, that's the highest end, the highest pressure and the most expensive and maintenance intensive. But they take those really high pressures and it's pretty low maintenance, right? Especially with modern LEDs lasting as long as they do. They, they work really well. I've seen people use those to great success. But again, an order of magnitude more expensive than the prismatic glass and the prismatic glass is an order of magnitude more expensive than just a regular tubular glass so lots of options there the last thing i'll say about gauge glasses is if you're not sure check get the model number of your gauge valves but it can be very important it's not my understanding that it's code required but it's a really good idea to use gauge glass valves that have a ball check in the valve so that should that glass break because of a temperature swing or somebody hits it with a forklift or something, God forbid, that should that glass break, rather than filling the boiler room with steam and us ending up with a situation where it's hard to get to the boiler to even isolate the gauge glass or shut the boiler down, those balls that are in the valve will plug the port for the glass so that you can get there and shut the boiler down and swap the gauge glass and bring it back online. So just a safety tip there, make sure that your gauge glass valves have those ball checks in them uh, because the day the, the glass breaks, you'll be really glad they did.